Hi everyone, welcome back. We're going to take a look at how to generate random numbers in Java. There's basically two nice easy ways to do it. Here's method number one. Method number one, let me just try to generate a random number from 0 to 10. Um, make my variable, and there's a built-in class in Java called the math class. You can just access it there, capital M on math, and one of the methods inside of it is called random. And you'll see there as I was actually typing it, let me type that again, it's telling us a bit about it. It sends us back a double, so a decimal number. Uh, the method's called random, and it says here it returns a value greater than or equal to zero and less than one. What this means is the highest number it's going to send back is going to be 0.9999999999, but it won't actually give us back the one. So when I actually go to use it, and I do something like this. First of all, you'll see that we have a red line because this is a decimal number because random is a decimal. And I'm sending it to an integer here. So the first thing we have to do is I do a little casting of the number. And so this is sort of looking bad, but let's explain it. The smallest value that this would send back would be 0. 0 times 100 is 0 and integer value of 0 is 0 so the lowest value here will be a 0 what's the highest value well math.random could go as high as 0.9999999 times 100 means we're going to get 99.9999999 repeating and when i integer that it'll drop off the decimal leaving us with 99 so this actually sends back 0 to 99. Now that confuses a lot of students because of the 100 here, but if you actually follow through the steps you'll see, you know, the int casting ditches off that last decimal part and that's why you end up with that 99 there. Here let me comment that. Now some people say, well what happens if I want 1 to 100? Well, that's easy. Just add an extra 1 at the end and now what you've got is you've got 1 to 100. So one way to help students remember this is the 100 means there's 100 different numbers starting at 1. And that would be 1 to 100. Not bad, right? If you wanted to roll dice, you could do something like this. Math.random. And that would give you 1 to 6. Or if you wanted to do another range like 10 to 20. I should have just typed that. It would have been faster. Well, 10 to 20 is technically 11 different numbers starting at 10. And so you can correct me if I'm wrong there, but 10 to 20 is 11 numbers. And then you have it starting at 10. So you can think about these lines and why they work. If we give it a quick run here, you'll see that this one definitely works. Do, 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 do. And we get our random numbers which I never printed out. Okay, but let's just trust this will work. Now, the second way to do random numbers, which is actually a way that I do in lots of my sample codes, is I use a class called random. So here's the random class. The random class, you actually have to do something called importing. And it's found in a folder that's already made for you that contains lots of different classes. And it's in a folder called java.utilities. And notice it's a capital R for random. So once you put this, basically when you compile the program, it quickly jumps in there and reads that class. Now you have access and you're allowed to use that class. Now, the further step to it is to actually use the commands in the random class, we have to make a random object. I'll just call it Randy New Random. Now for now, just type that line and memorize it. We'll explain uh, what this line actually does in a future video that's coming up soon and basically what I have here is I have a random object generated from that class I've just given it the name variable name Randy and now I can use it integer num hey Randy please use your and the nice thing here is is Randy was generated from the random class so it has all the code that is coded inside of the random class and one of those commands is next int. And so 
Next int does a random number from 0, but does not include the number I put in the bracket. So next int 100. So that'll generate from 0 to 99. Okay, it does not go from 0 to 100. It doesn't go 1 to 100. It's 0 to 99. Don't ask me why. The person who coded it, that's what they did. So if I did something like that, that's the equivalent of the line you had before. Okay, the 1 to 100 line. And now if I actually just want to do some print lines here, I can print, I can print X, system out, print line D, system out, print line N, system out, print line num. And that's it. Those are your two ways. So you can either do the import, make a random object, and then do that. And remember, once you've made this random object, you never have to make it again. You can just use lines like this all throughout your program. Or you can use the math library slash class there. So we give us a little run. And you can see every time we run it, this thing will actually generate the numbers it's supposed to generate. So that's basically it for random numbers, right? You can just keep this code handy, imitate it when you need your random numbers. Thanks for watching.